Hello, everybody. We're here at Sight Night All Night, and this is our session, Moms the Word. So basically, what we have here are a bunch of moms that have survived a particularly tricky year. I think it's been a tricky year for everybody, but as moms, we have a special bond here. I think that we can all, there's some things we'll probably share on this session, and there's some things we'll share after we start rec stop recording. <laughs> so you can maybe call us later if you want some more um, of the crazy details. But yeah, it's been, it's been a particularly interesting year, and I think there's a lot of us... Um, lot to share and a lot of people on this call that will probably resonate with what we're gonna we're gonna talk about so I'm gonna start myself I'll introduce myself my name is Aoife Delaney and um, I am a mom I have two kids so my kids have just turned five and three we actually did um our second set of lockdown birthday parties because they're late March and early April so that was quite a significant poignant kind of reminder of how long this really has been um, but was still, but still lovely because we could see the light at the end of the tunnel. But yeah, so two very young kids in the middle of uh, a tricky year. I'm going to pass it on to you, Edda, to introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Um, so proud to join this group of fabulous moms. So I, you know, I've uh, rested on for advice the last year. Um, uh, my name is Edda Arzan. I'm based in Istanbul, and I have a 16 month old. So basically, my son has not known a world where there hasn't been a pandemic. He thinks masks are normal. He's never seen life without masks. Um, and, you know, uh, for me, the, the, the strangest thing was obviously when you become a mom, your life changes so much. And then on top of that, your business life and your social life entirely change as well. So basically, besides my husband, there's nothing been that's been the same in my daily life pre-birth and after birth um so it's like you know and we moved in the middle of that as well so literally everything about my life changed thankfully i have a husband dog and cat that that have remained the same um but uh, so that's my little um pandemic uh story um yeah, on to you fiona i know your kids are a bit older but yeah, I think I've got the oldest kids here. I've got two kids. Uh, Harriet is uh, 17, so just learning to drive here in the UK, and Max, who's 11. Uh, it's been interesting um, having them both at home uh, for the last year and trying to homeschool. Uh, particularly challenging for me was that my daughter was due to sit her GCSEs, which at 16, uh, they basically have to pass their exams to go to the next stage of school. And my son um, actually has a form of autism, which he struggles with school. So he's actually been out of full-time school for pretty much a year prior to lockdown. I just got him back into full-time school for two weeks and then we went into lockdown. So it was, uh, yeah, a bit of a challenge in the McGorry household, but yeah, husband, two kids and a new dog, which we got uh, in lockdown. So uh, yeah, but we, we, we are currently surviving. On to you, Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie Lee Tiffany. I am based in Southern California. I have two children, a two and a half year old and an almost six year old. I actually found out I was pregnant about a week before the lockdown here in the United States. So I truly don't think many of my clients um, and member hotels even knew I was pregnant. And then all of a sudden I had a bundle of joy join me on Halloween this past year. Um, my husband's a firefighter paramedic, so he's been on the front lines of this pandemic, and it's been very challenging because when he's gone, he's gone. Um, and then when daycare closed, daycare closed for a two and a half year old. So what do you do? How do you manage? Um, it was very difficult. And Karina, do you mind sharing more about your children and how you managed? You're on mute. Sorry, <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> so my name is Karina um, I'm living in Germany. And um, yes, I'm maybe I have the smallest child uh, born on the 1st of 1st, 2020. So at least my year started actually very nicely. <laughs> and um, yeah, what can I say? I think my son even does not know that other people exist without masks. Um, and he does not know how to deal with other kids because he's only in a, yeah, like kind of isolated and it's even he feels weird if he goes on a playground and he wants to play with other kids you feel like is this good or is this nitty is it like what you do but yeah we have like a um i have a special situation because um, my husband lives in georgia the country georgia and i live in germany but i lived there before but i came to give birth to germany and uh, yeah, we were actually separated for six months. So he saw his son um, when he was born and he had to go back. And then he came uh, the second time only for two days. 
so he wanted to come then longer more longer but then corona came and um, we were separated until august so actually we booked a few tickets and all had been cancelled and yeah so i was quite lucky because i um moved into my like parents home <laughs> and that's where i still am actually <laughs> so um yeah we try to now still also travel so i had been also in georgia um in november uh, until february this year and um, so he comes only three months he can come so we are always up and down he left now on sunday and uh, we hope we will see each other in two months but we don't really know what's going on especially since georgia is also a bit uh, um yeah like it's not like europe or america let's say this way <laughs> yeah so um i think this has been our my biggest challenge uh, being a mother in this uh, particular uh, session or a time of um, life but yeah I think now we can also talk about what has been the, uh, the greatest lesson what do you think <laughs> I can jump in here yes um, Lena, I mean I interesting you sharing with it's great to have to be in a bubble with the parents and have the parents but equally really that's so difficult to not have your husband because that is your your partner through all of this as well so it's interesting to hear that you, you need one but not the other it's difficult so I can it can empathize with the last year for you. And um, certainly with myself, um, I, my husband here, we were obviously not seeing the parents, but my husband works for him, so he's his own company. And that comes with its own benefits during a pandemic and then its own challenges. So there's a lot of flexibility that he has, which is great. Um, and then equally, there's the um, intensity of owning a company through a pandemic and trying to figure out, you have people looking to you to say, you know, is my job safe? What's the new, what are the new protocols? So there's kind of a lot of intensity from the adult side isn't there and then you look at the kids and you're trying to not let that disseminate and the other thing actually I resonated with I think Karina you'd mentioned it um as well when with kids socializing and being in parks and certainly that idea the strangest thing like when we were out and is a, certainly here in Ireland at the beginning there was a 2.5k radius and we'd go out for walks around our area and you'd see because you just know everybody in your area you'd see other kids and you'd have to say to and then for me, two and four year old, stop, don't go near them. You know, don't go. That's your friend, but way from afar. And particularly at the beginning when this, the, the fear of all of the unknown is really quite intense. And it's it's such a, a wrong thing to say to a kid, but you're kind of teaching them a really you feel bad at the lesson you're teaching them, like stay away from someone. So kind of it's a lot of intensity in your head, isn't it? You just feel the weight of um, not making them grow up with a complex. Um, my, my, my kids, also my son learning the word hand sanitizer, you're like, you shouldn't know that word, but you do. But as certainly for me, one so um, and I neglected to mention the beginning. I think one of my biggest challenges this year has been um, taking on the site presidency, presidency, which has been so exciting and something that I've really been um, so wanting to do and uh, do my best at, and have very much enjoyed the last couple of months. But equally, would never have expected to take it on at a time when. Um, to your point, Jamie, there's no childcare and nobody else to help you out and two adults and two kids living in a house with two jobs. So um, really kind of battling with my brain on wanting to do the best for the association in a year that I thought I, I couldn't do my best then. And, and where do you draw the line of um, this is as much as I can do? And, and then I'm done. I'm, I'm, I have nothing, no kind of benchmark, really. So that was my biggest challenge. And I suppose the way that I overcame that, it took me a while, but something I think I shared with you, Edda, before, and um, was a quote that I just went back to and I was like, okay, this quote, this quote means something to me. And I'll just keep on reminding myself of that to move forward. And it was, um, the key to juggling is to know that some of the balls you have in the air are made of plastic and some are made of glass. So the balls that I'm juggling, all the ones that are plastic, essentially that is work. You know, that is the things that aren't the most essential. They're very important, but the glass balls are my family and the kids. And if I can make sure that the, those balls are in the air and they're, I don't drop those, I know that they're happy. It will make everything else easier. And that I can go to bed at night going, my glass balls have been looked after and I managed whatever I could out of the plastic. And for me, that really helped. So that was kind of my you did well, you made it through another day. And I'm still doing that because as we all know, we're in different countries that are at different levels of being open. So we're still very much in a situation. My kids for the first time went back to school last week after four months um, and they only have morning daycare. So then you figure out your afternoon. So it's, it's a continued challenge and it's interesting to hear um, and sometimes be a little bit jealous that people are in different situations, but you learn, this is how we're kind of growing. So that's kind of, yeah, that was my main challenge and how I overcame. Etta, let me pass it back over to you. 
Um, I think, um, as I said, I mean, with my mine was more of a personal challenge of everything in my life just completely changing at once. I, you know, mankind, you know, I don't know, I don't feel that good with change and suddenly everything changing. But my biggest, um, the way I overcame it mostly, well, I overcame being a big word, we're still in the middle of this, but, or towards the end, but um, it's been more just watching how much he's been benefiting from having me at home. And normally the, you know, my travel schedule, my work schedule would have just kept me apart from him for so much longer. So I really, like in Turkey, I would have gotten a four month pregnancy, uh, maternity leave. So now, like, I know the Scandinavians have it so right, you know, with those really long maternity leaves. It's just, um, so I'm trying to constantly, and it's always very hard to look on the, you know, glass is half full kind of way of looking at life. I, I find that always a little too um, difficult. But with this one, like, I see the benefit it's had on him. Like, every day that I see him a happy and thriving person, it, it just makes me, okay, this year is not for nothing. You're lucky, like you've got to spend your time with him. So I feel like it's an investment in our future because like learning about how important those like first three years of child development is, um, the more you read, it's, I'm just very happy that, um, so, I mean, now, now that he's a bit older, I can't wait to <laughs> have, a, have a life, but, um, but you know, um, I've been sharing with the world. I got my first vaccination last night. So um uh, hopefully life will get back to normal a lot sooner than than later. What about you, Fiona? Well, I think, yeah, thank you, Elena. I'm, I'm really grateful that my children are older. I really don't know how you guys have coped with such small children. At least I can explain things to my kids and they kind of understand as much as it was alien to all of us, they could obviously understand it as well as we could. And I kind of, at the beginning, felt lockdown was the worst thing in the world for us because of my son's situation, where we had just got him back into school. He was kind of back in education. Um, but actually, um, lockdown and furlough were one of the best things that ever happened to our family. We were very lucky in this country that I was put on furlough, uh, but I still had a job. It works quite differently than in the US. Um, and, you know, I was able to spend time with my son. I was able to try and homeschool him. Homeschooling didn't go so well with his aversion to school, um, but I did get to spend lots of time with him and, you know, time that I would never have had at his age, you know, to be able to do that. My daughter sitting her exams. She's a very smart cookie, so luckily she'd already done her mock exam, so she got great results and was able to get onto the courses that she wants to go to. But actually having that time as a family and you know, we've had breakfast, lunch and dinner together every single day for the last 12 months. And, you know, for uh, my husband used to go to London every day. Um, you know, I, I travel, as you guys know, I'm in the US every six to eight weeks for a week. And don't get me wrong, I love it and I miss it so much. I cannot wait for that first time I get on a plane, I'm going to spam all your Facebooks, your LinkedIn, everything when I get on that first plane. You're all going to know when I get on the plane. Um, but, you know, to have that time with the kids and it actually gave us time to think about where we were and what we were doing. And we've actually changed my son's school. We've managed to get some other things done for him and getting some extra support. So actually seeing the, the positive in it, it, it's actually been a really great experience for our family. And I'm very lucky to still have a job and stuff as well, which I'm back doing full time. So. Yeah, very, very, very grateful. But yeah, so. what about you, Jamie? It's interesting you say that you're grateful to have a job. I too am thankful to have a job through this pandemic, but I don't know about you, but I certainly felt a sense of survivor's guilt. Um, getting those yeah. phone calls from friends and peers and moms and not mothers that were losing their jobs, it was just really hard. And here I was spinning like all of you, thousands of plates leaning on each other, trying to manage the childcare schedule, the naps, and who's going to be watching my son, who's going to have, what's our next meal while all being home and trying to do my job. Um, I did the very best that I could. And I think now more than ever, it's acceptable to be like, I'm going to go pick up my son from school. I have to drop off my child and I'm going to be on a Zoom call. Before this pandemic, that wasn't acceptable. We all knew we had families, but it was very black and white for what you integrated to the work conversation. So mm -hmm. I'm grateful that this past year has opened up those doors and allowed the conversations. It's allowed us to be more authentic with ourselves um, and acceptable. You know, barriers are down and we're able to connect on a new level. And here we all are talking about our biggest struggles and how we got through it somehow, some way. Um, it's been crazy, right? Um, but we did it and we survived and 
there's a quote that I once read about the juggle and the struggle of moms. We're already doing so many things and, and we're working full time that we're the best employees out there. And I can truly say that we are. So Karina, how, how would you say you accomplished um, your biggest challenge? Yeah. Well, you are so true with having all these things. Well, I'm a, say a new mother. So for me, this is like also all this challenge, um, which came all at the same moment, you know, like my life has changed with the pandemic and with the child. So sometimes I feel like, well, it has been a great time because for me, all these, um, let's say the negative part has been blown by this positive feeling of becoming a mom, you know? And um, having a great boss for me, uh, which gives me all the flexibility. Um, and I think this change of what you also said before, being a mother and like working at the same time, it has been always, well, you cannot control like the schedule of your kids or, you know, your, how can it be that you miss your appointment? Well, it happens, you know, <laughs> because if you have to challenge or I have to deal with so many things. But um, having like now the situation and people understand and they're so careful and they say, yeah, of course I understand. Yeah, let's reschedule, no problem. And that we have the possibility of um, like to work from home and don't have to travel and this time to go back and forward, yeah. So I think for us, this is um, a great plus in the end, which will also stay with us. And I think this is the most and the best part and um, that we are together with our families because I have the feeling still I have a lot more to do, but I also have more time with my family. Like even my husband is in the other country, but when we are together, well, unfortunately he is not working, but fortunately he is not working because in this time we have really quality time, you know? And I think this is what, um, there's a lot of positive things to see. And um, I see also this, which remains for a long time um, which makes our life also after this pandemic a lot easier and more comfortable to combine this world mom and working. <laughs> yes. It's interesting. You probably, you're probably able to see everybody nodding and with everything that everybody says, you're like, yes, yes. I agree <laughs> with that. Yes. <laughs> it's true. And as much as you don't want to be, um, or don't want to just, be, everything has not been rosy, of course, so we all, all know that, but it is great to see that there, it, it is true that there has been a positive for all of us in different ways from the last year. So not that we would necessarily have wished this to happen, but great things come out of it. And also resilience. I mean, doesn't it just show that we'll figure out a new way and some benefits that we never would have thought of. What really resonated actually with me, Jamie, what you were saying about kind of what's acceptable now. And that is definitely something that I've seen that's changed. So it's it's very, you can be open. Now my kid finishes school. So now I'm, because now we've just changed a way of life. So we do that. And that's that's something that if it took the pandemic to change, that's a benefit for us moms and, and dads as well. So that's been that's been great. I think the dads as well it's been a huge positive you know absolutely it, you know because uh, you know in most families it traditionally runs to you know mummy being the main carer and in our family that's the choice that we made that's that is how we you know we live our life I do do most of the childcare, but he has been able to do stuff and it has been slightly more acceptable when the kids have run into his office and interrupted yeah. his meetings or he's had to drop things and do the school run because sometimes I've got a really important Zoom meeting and I can't go and take the kids to school so you know we are having to juggle it um, a lot more but something that Jamie said about the survivor guilt really resonated with me because unfortunately I did lose members of my team and colleagues as, as a lot of us did and the survivor guilt is real but it also was you know I, I don't know how you guys found it but when I saw these people baking and cooking and learning languages and all of these amazing things that people accomplished during lockdown and I was like I'm managing to put three meals on the table I'm kind of doing my job I'm kind of being a mom I'm dressed I have clothes on it may be like her and it may have an elasticated waist but I have clothes on you know and I think it was great when people like us came out and said you know what it's actually okay that you haven't learned the language and you haven't and I think my site family really helped me with that but I'm really happy for people that got to do that and please don't think I'm disrespecting anybody that managed to achieve all of those great things but I didn't but we survived and you know what I'm, I'm grateful for that. But I, I also want to um, jump on um, on the on the dads because especially when you become a you know a new mom, all the books were warning me. You're, you know, 
be ready that your partner's not gonna attach to the baby as soon as you do, because you know, in the first, especially the six months, they're just so attached to you. There's only they're limited in what how they can help anyways, because you're you know, you're feeding and everything. And we've just been so lucky that he got to enjoy all of that with me, um, which we never would have had. And apparently it's really not a matter of um, I I it, the whole barrier in my mind really broke down. It's not a ma matter of gender. It's genuinely the time you have available on your hands to spend. The paternity leave in Turkey is three days. So three I mean, days. That's well. That's better than most of the world, Fiona. So actually, wow. it's that bad for the world. So you know, it, it, I'm just. I hope that, as Jamie Lee said, some things actually change. You know, there that there is better maternity leave. That there is more paternity leave. That I am able to say. I have to put my kids to bed right now. So, you know, you know, I can't have a meeting right now. It's, it's the, you would have never said those sentences. Um, so it's, you know, I, I really hope that some things uh, will per remain permanent for our, for our work lives, because that's really the only way to keep women in the workforce, right? I mean, it's only so much we can do. Um, so, yeah, I hope some, some of the things hopefully remain, but hopefully not hand sanitizers and masks. No, no. I think we'd all be glad to see the back of those. <laughs> and the other thing that really struck yeah. on me, I don't know how long we've been talking, maybe 20 odd minutes or so, but not one of us have had a child or a kid come in to ask us a question. <laughs> I'm kind of waiting on either side. This would be the, the one yeah. that, that, that hasn't happened, which is quite unusual. I can hear my kids. I don't know if anybody else can, I, but there I, is a screaming match mine, going on. I can't hear yours. <laughs> it's my yeah, mute always. We, we, we can hear <laughs> each other. <laughs> Oh, well, it's yeah. been wonderful to have the time together. Um, thank you so much to each of you for sharing your story because I know it's um, it can be quite personal. So hopefully it's been a benefit to everybody that's been able to listen in. And I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say we'd love to hear from others. Pop us a message if you need to support, want to chat or share a cool story as well. We'd love that. And please, everybody, enjoy the rest of Sight Night All Night. Thank you. Everybody.